Oh, start. All right. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of No Regrets Podcast, episode number 31. And we got a new member here today, bro. What's good, my brother? You want to introduce yourself? It's good. I'm Tom. Uh, <laughs> at, at Cozy Tommy Wall on Instagram. You follow me if you feel so inclined. Yeah. I'm oh. here. Your voice sound hella deep. Yeah. That's the wine, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll put the Instagram down below. But if you haven't already, follow all our socials at No Regulars on TikTok. We're already at a hundred and let me see. I think we had a hundred sixteen thousand, bro. We getting up there in the world, you know, with the big boy club. Oh yeah, we just said one hundred sixteen thousand on TikTok. Shout out to y'all, bro. Follow us on Instagram at No Regulars Podcast. Follow us on all podcasts and platforms at No Regulars Podcast on. Apple Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts, all that good stuff. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. Go to the comment section if you want to talk to us. If you want to go DM us, have any questions, you know, you're fully inclined to talk to us, all that good shit. And, um, yeah, so, hey, my brother, it's glad to have you on the episode. I didn't even get to dap you up, man. You know what I'm saying? Good to see you. Yeah, bro. We got some, we got a good episode coming today. I got some good topics to talk about. But first, let's just start the show because, you know, I don't really talk about current events, but the, the world... It's going crazy nowadays, bro. Will Smith smacked the shit out of Chris Rock, bro. I just want to know your 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 thoughts on that, bro. Bro, as soon as it happened, like I, I was just laying down in my bed. I had work the next morning, so like yeah. I got to wake up early for work because I got to go into the city. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, ain't no way, because I'm I hear it happening on the TV because my dad's watching the next room. And I go out there, and I'm like, Dad, he's like, yeah, and I'm like. <laughs> and I'm checking them social media, and then lo- they're reacting like I am. It's no way it's real. It's no way it's real. And then the clips start coming out from, like, different countries. Like, uh, I think it said, like, Australia. And they're like, yeah, this is what happened. He actually slapped him, and then he started yelling, like, oh, my gosh. I thought it was fake. We was actually recording a podcast, and UJ had it, but, like, I was going to make a clip, but he, was, he wasn't he was by the mic. Mm-hmm. And, like, we just seen, I just heard here Will Smith saying, like, keep my wife's name out your fuck. I'm like, yo. All right, so what do you, who do you think is in the wrong in that so- situation? And it's really crazy because Will Smith don't even curse in his raps. He don't. And he just came out there and he just started. But it's like really, I feel like I could, I can't even pick who's right or wrong because they're both right and they're both wrong. I mean, I eyes. guess because like, but def if I had to pick one, Will just because you guys are in a certain space and you guys are of a certain stature, you guys are like, you guys you can't go to the Oscars. You guys both have you know done stuff. Movies and whatnot. Exactly. You know that's not the that's not the time and place. You can ca- grab him after. You can say something, but you don't go up there and smack him in front, in front of, of a lot the everybody. world, bro. Nah, that's crazy. That's I'm crazy. like, that's so like I feel bad for Chris Rock because like he can't do nothing. Like the, he's a comedian. Literally, the joke wasn't even that bad. You can't smack a comedian. You can't hit a comedian. It's like one of those unwritten rules. They're not like. They're not the whole, it's the same standard. They joke about life. You can't slap. It's like hitting that's a little kid. You exactly, can't a bro. Like it's not his fault. He, he made a joke, and everybody's like, oh, alopecia, alopecia. Yeah, I understand, but, like, 200,000 people suffer from alopecia in the United States a year. Exactly. Like that's, that's just hair loss from due from your immune system attacking hair follicles. Like, I understand it's a sensitive st- subject, and you shouldn't be joking on it, but, like, he's a comedian. Every now and then they cross the line. You pull him to the side and say, hey, I'm not comfortable with that, or even yell from your seat. You don't go up there and smack the man, because now you're not only messing with, like, your public image, but you're messing with your legacy. You messing with the money. That was with- nuts. Like, who thinks like that's like I'm not gonna lie. That's a little out of. That was very weird. Like the whole thing was just mad weird. Cringe, bro. Like he really went up and smacked the shit out of him. He. I mean, to him. to think these niggas are actors, so you would think like he could control his emotions exactly. But like for him to go, I feel like I feel like Will was getting tired of being bashed by the social media and shit like that. But it's now it's getting worse. It's been like it's been years because like and it's not gonna be the same to his. To his credit, they're not. I guess to his credit, it's not gonna be the same because yeah. they're not gonna be joking on him the same way because he just went up to smack the dude. But That's like, what I'm saying he, it's been a while because they've been getting them jokes off for a minute. Which they one were, about his, they his were wife? The, they were getting the, him, his wife. The, as soon as the August stuff came out, oh yeah, everybody yeah. was punching up on Will Smith. <laughs> the red table talk punching up on Will Smith. He was he had the he had the the, the memes where he was his eyes were red. She they got were, more memes now. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like he did that because one. I don't know. I feel like he just, nigga, just felt disrespected for some apparent reason. And plus, he be thinking like he be getting pushed around by the media. So if mm. he say something about his wife, he's be like, nah, I'm tired of this shit. But like now he made it worse. Yeah. Like, bro, I be seeing shit like <laughs> hella memes like freaking, uh, it was like a meme with like Jada in it with the bald head. She's like, man, I'm not impressed. If you was Tupac, you would have shot him. I'm like, like. And I get it. I understand why he did it and everything. But like, 
you not do, you don't do that in front of Oscars. In front of all them white people. If I'm looking at everything that Jada has done to me, and I'm like, damn, you gonna have to hold that GI Jane joke, my sister. You're talking about <laughs> Tupac and Big 2022. It's no way that I'm gonna go smack. That's this a dude. fact. I'm bro. not smacking. You just this gotta dude. relax, son. But had it been my wife, oh yeah, no, 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 no. We gonna we gonna talk after for real. Yeah, just talk absolutely. after. Absolutely. We gonna we don't have that conversation. You now gonna, we got the white people looking at us like. Oh, who brought these people uh, back? Like, look, who they, brought these fucking? I they know what literally I said. just had the the Oscar so white campaign where where the black people uh, boycotted. They brought us back, and we all <laughs> now look at this dude, the freaking the dumb shit, bro, on live TV in front of every, like it. So, just, that's why we it need, just never stopped, bro. It just we, never stopped. We need our own or on our own uh, award show platform. That's what it really comes down. We got to, BET. But. That don't count. <laughs> be, you know, BET Awards, bro? I haven't watched BET since 2011. <laughs> <laughs> you don't be watching the BET movies, bro? I used to, but not not really as much anymore. Cause yeah. I, you know, I'd be everybody on streaming. At the age of streaming, be watching Netflix and uh, Hulu, all that stuff. They they bring in all the big budget actors and all that stuff, all the TV shows. They're bringing it all to Netflix. It's all on streaming now. Nobody watching TV yeah, that's really true. anymore. I'd be watching HBO Max. That shit's fire. I'm telling you, bro. They up next. Cause mm-hmm. Netflix is messing up the bag. They're messing Hell up the money. Hell yeah, bro. Because they don't be freaking putting the same shit. Or like They won't be putting like good movies out. They don't even putting out no originals no more. And they're stacking all these movies that they are putting out with a bunch of big budget actors. So now they're going to eventually... They are they are bringing up the price of a subscription. Yeah. And now they're talking about some, oh, you can't sk- share your password. Can't share the password, bro. He's going to find you out, lost me. I go to I go to Hulu. I go to HBO. I promise you. They they doing it big over there. I don't exactly, got any job. Bro. They got the boondocks over on HBO Max. I don't mm-hmm. need job. Huh? Yeah. I think I'm watching all the DCAMU fucking movies, bro. On HBO. Netflix doing nothing. For $10 a month, I'll do that. All they giving me is that Kanye documentary and Cobra Kai. That's all Netflix is giving me. Are now. you still watching Cobra Kai? Bro, they be getting, they be boxing on that I know show, they bro. do, bro. I know they do. I think you're the one who put me on bro, the first one. Bro, high schoolers just boxing. Just, I don't really want to, spoiler t- alert, yeah. but they just be, they just be, like, the, just know the niggas get right, bro. Right, yeah, they get right. They get right just continues, like, it look like fucking John Wick in that bitch, bro. bro. if I seen that live, ah, dog, I'm walking out of school. They got the whole school rumbling. I'm like, nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> not, I'm, y'all going crazy right now. Hey, bro. But you got any topics you want to talk about? Well, to segue from that. Will Smith to to some a more pressing matter when it comes to like black men in particular. Like we gotta start going to therapy, bro. I promise you. <laughs> this stuff is pent is like it's building up and it's building up and all this 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 anxiety and people are just getting they're getting so antsy as a result of, you know, all these stuff, especially when you're in the public eye, but like still yeah. you've been inside for a while, you know, the whole pandemic, blah blah blah. blah. Everybody's getting so built up. This is a perfect time for people to go to therapy because we're getting Motherfuckers is getting, they're getting, they're getting pent up and aggression. Then, yeah, they don't have a, a good outlet to release it. I mean, I feel like low key, I feel like therapy be a scam sometimes. What do you mean by it? Because I feel like, I feel like some people, not every, not every therapist, I feel like some therapists will be like, they'll, you'll tell them your thoughts and then they'll prescribe something to you. Okay. And just because, like, they'll just prescribe something that's just like out of the ordinary. So you just continually come back paying the money. Mm hmm. Like, imagine I'm a therapist, and you tell me, all, like, you just want to talk to me. You're paying me just to talk to you. Mm. And I just, like, that's easy money. Okay. Like, that's, a, that's and I be feeling like they could take advantage of people, especially when they down, like, depression type shit. I feel like a lot, not every, but maybe there's, you know, there's sick people in the world. Yeah. There's a lot of sick niggas in this yeah. world. Yeah. Like, they just want to scam niggas out of the, out of their money, just tell them, like, oh, you got, you got clinical depression here. I'll prescribe you these meds and shit like that. And, you know, you keep coming back, and we'll just keep talking about it. They don't really give a fuck about what niggas say. Mm, that's definitely one side of it. Yeah. And, even, like, and I get that from, like, a lot of people that yeah. say, oh, I feel like this therapist just tell you a uh, general answer. You're just t- paying to talk to them, and they just throw medicine at your face. Mm-hmm. And just sedate medicine, 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 medicine. And, like, I get where that can come from, especially since, like, the way it's portrayed in media. And the oh, yeah. Everything hey, nowadays. Bro, media, you're not media, like, B. Yeah. Even at that, like, I... Went to therapy in college and they didn't prescribe me nothing because I was just like, all right, I just need to get right. Yeah. So I went and I got right and I just had it. Sometimes it helps just to have somebody to talk you to. can't because talking to a therapist isn't like talking to the rest of the people in your life because you can't really like you can't really. There's some stuff. There's always going to be people in your life, different people that you can talk about different things with. I get, a therapist yeah. sometimes acts as like just somebody you can 
offload all this stuff onto that's not going to expect anything out of you. Because a lot of times when you offload your problems onto people, they expect you to get some type of a solution, how you're going to fix it, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you just want to vent or you just want to pour true. yourself out. So, like, and also at that, like, not all therapists stack you with medicine because also there's, like, it's a lot of, it's it's weird. It's like laws and shit. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah and it's nuanced when it comes to how people are going to, like, they're nuances when it comes to, like, how, what type of medicine people are taking. They're going to be prescribed. And there's a lot of side effects to some of the medications. So, like, it mm. comes to that. And sometimes you get prescribed medicine. Like, people get go to therapy, get prescribed medicine. They just don't take it because they're not comfortable with that. Mm. So, like, it's just, like, it comes from a place of just trying to find someone that's genuine, really. Oh, I feel, I feel what you mean. And I get that it's, it's like, there's kind of a stigma against it. But then again, like, it helps yeah, I feel like it helps to a certain extent. I feel, I feel like it does to a certain, help. It's not the also, obviously, it's not the be all, the end all be all, however the saying is. It's yeah, not yeah. everything you do, but it helps to go do that because they also give you, they not only help you when it comes to you just like releasing all the stuff that you got yeah. to get off your chest, but like they also give you like, if you are so inclined to have it, if you need it, they'll give you like actionable feedback, something that yeah, you can like yeah. work on and how you can help just build yourself up from the situation that you're in really mm. and not everyone in your life has that insight because when it comes to that whole psych thing I, you sound like you'll be a good therapist i'm a psych major yeah hey. i'm going uh back to get my master's soon but like it oh, just really? like yeah, oh, all right that's tough it's just like it's there's a lot of uh you sometimes you just need help make taking those first steps to like getting out of that that rut that you're in so i you feel know, you i feel you not, and that, i'm big on the medicine a prescription is not the Answer. Answer to everything. Of course. Of Sometimes course. some people need it to help them get out of a place, but eventually I feel like you should get, you know, they shouldn't be on it. I feel like the medicine is like the easy way out. Yeah. And like, yeah. at the if, same time, it's like, if it you, could be bad. If you need it and you won't get like, if you need it, then take it. Absolutely. But yeah. I feel like, I, I feel like the first response should not be medicine. Oh yeah. Nah, hell no. That shouldn't be the first That's response. That's sick. Because That's some, how niggas become drug addicts. It, some people just need somebody some people literally just need somebody and to talk and to. And a therapist could be somebody. And there's also like, I'm, you just have to be a really good person to be able to be an effective therapist because it's easy to take advantage of people when they're at their lowest. Yeah. And then people like, and there's a big thing with even th- with like people getting really dependent on their therapist. Like, you help them all. You have to also help them stand on their own too. You know. Yeah, yeah. And the end goal ultimately is for them to not need you anymore. They have the whole tools that they can, like, go do. be by themselves. Yeah, that it's, makes sense. It's like a. Uh, a therapist is, should be like like training wheels. You feel me? Mm, and then okay, I know what you mean. Take them off. You're going back. So like, you just Shit. learn how to figure stuff out. People, y'all hearing this, bro? If you need a therapist, hit my nigga Tom, bro. Hey. Doctor Tom. <laughs> no more Doctor Umar, bro. Res- Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully, uh, I'm here. But the mind is a crazy place, bro. Like I remember, like my dad used to work. My dad's like a counselor, right? Uh-huh. So he's he used to work uh, in Newark for uh, YCS. It's like a program where kids get kicked out of school. Mm. And not kicked out of school, either they get kicked out or there's a lot of, like, gang members, some kids that get bullied. And there was this one girl that was, like, mental. Mm. Like, when I tell you, like, he said she used to walk around the building. You know the exit signs? Yeah. She used to watch it. She used to stand there. And then my dad be like, um, I forgot. Let's say her name, Rebecca. He'd be like, Rebecca, what's, what, you okay? She's like, she looks up and points at She's like, it's talking to me. I oh. said. Oh. He said. There's okay. A, there's a step we gotta take. <laughs> my, my, like my dad, my dad basically is just there to guide them, but he's mm-hmm. not. He don't do that crazy shit. Mm-hmm. He just so they had to call the whole like mental ward, and they sent this like a psychiatric ward. Yeah, she should definitely get evaluated. Like, just imagine, bro. Like, you, do you want to be a therapist? <laughs> like, what, imagine it that shit walked into your into your office, bro. I would. I. I. Can you help her? I honestly, <laughs> this this we can talk about it. Like we can really talk about it. We can see, like, but honestly, if it's, like, purely, like, she, things, inanimate objects are speaking to her, we're going to have to refer her to something Else. that can help, something that can help her there. <laughs> I, that, feel that's beyond, I feel like that would be beyond my, my scope as a, okay. once we get a bit down from there, then I feel like that would be more in my wheelhouse. Yeah, I yeah. don't got my degrees and certification. I haven't learned what I had to learn fully yet, but, like, I feel like that, that that's not in my... I'm not. I'm not that. Uh, I'm not that good yet. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. But that that goal leads into what else I want to talk about. Cause I was watching. I think I used to watch like scary movies and shit like that. Like mm-hmm. you know, The Conjuring. Mm-hmm. You know, those are based on true stories. Yeah, I figured that some of them were. And so, I see, I, I like, do you thing. think that people actually still could get possessed like that? Like, like the, a ghost could, like, or a demon could just like, cause like that shit don't be on the news. It depends. Really, when it comes to believing that, it depends on how 
spiritual slash religious you are. Yeah. Because I feel like there are always those, because as a religious person, I feel like there's always those spirits that you try to avoid and that, you know, they can, you just got to live your life a certain way that you'll be able to, you know, Mm -hmm. balance out things and keep that negative stuff away from you. I feel like, I feel like that not, when it comes to that whole thing and most things, when it comes to spirituality and religion, I feel like I'm more of a gray area person. So I feel like there's, there are spirits that not physically, grab you and have and you just, start tweaking more. but I, think, <laughs> I feel like they would drive you to do certain things that are out of your character people are like yo are they possessed like oh that okay kind of push you nudge you in certain so it's not areas. like a nigga that's gonna like make you your head spin around like an owl type yeah, shit I, if i seen that oh <laughs> i'm throwing a bible holy water cross and i'm sprinting bro they're not i'm never oh i couldn't see that but like I definitely feel like there's things that push you to do things that are out of your character. Oh. The spirits that push you to go do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Ah, I felt that. I felt that. I believe that. But if people's heads are spinning around, then that's nuts. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready to see that. Cause like I remember I was watching. I forgot the last Conjuring movie. Like at the end, they showed like the clip because it was an actual hap- uh, it actually happened, and it was like a clip of like the boy talking that was possessed. Mm. That shit scared the fuck out of me. Like it sounded like a whole like like it sounded like he like acted that shit, but it was like a for real like clip back in like the seventies. Sheesh. Like I don't think like I feel like all that possessing shit like I feel like they don't do that like that shit don't really happen now. Mm. And if it does, like niggas don't talk about that shit because they don't want to scare niggas. Even at the same token, this the flip side is that like. People ask, oh, do miracles still happen? I'm like, I feel like they do, but you don't see it in Off, the media because media yeah. is, so, is so, it's a lot of the stuff is, again, media because all of us are on our phones all the time. Yeah. I feel like that's not, that just that stuff doesn't get into the media. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's certain things that we get pushed in the media when it's mostly entertainment that we don't see, like, there's no. not a lot of real stuff in media no more. So, so do you think, like, the media is, like, blocking off our view of life and shit? Yeah, Absolutely. Because I think so too. That's part of the reason why Chris Rock got smacked. That's what I'm social, thinking in my mind. Social bro. media and everybody got people so disillusioned that you feel like there's no consequences for your actions anymore. That's what I'm saying, bro. People forgot that you could really like anybody could walk up on you, disrespect them, they could slap you. Like mm-hmm. anybody could really get it out here. Exactly. Like, it's, it's it's crazy. People social feel, media is like brain. I feel like like I think social media is like a thing that's just like really like blocking off like our sense of the world because mm-hmm. like think about it whatever the government wants us to, wants us to see they'll put it on social media and shit mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. like you know north korea yeah. they don't know what the fuck going on absolutely not like who knows what if that's happening to us but we don't know about it Ooh. like you know you know russia i heard russia like the president and all his like bodyguards and shit are hiding in a bunker because they about to send a nuke yeah. but nobody talking about that shit if they nuke then it's gonna it's, if they it, nuke Ukraine is over like niggas is just throwing that shit back and forth and even at that like if they nuke I, I don't Russia's threats don't really make sense to me considering like there's a lot of backlash that comes from that for whoever sets it off around the world whoever sets it off first when it comes to those nukes and how much work people have done to uh to de-arm or whatever to unarm the nukes and shit yeah like the that? nukes yeah. and then peace treaties we're not gonna whoever sets it off then they're Instantly, history is going to have them under fire. And as we are currently standing, the world is against you. Hey, yeah. And everybody got their their everybody got their stock mm-hmm. to an extent. So, like, you're going to get handled. That's how I feel. And yeah. if you're like, I don't, if Russia goes and nu- nukes Ukraine, Putin feels like in the way that he's been like, uh, how do I say this? The way that he's been running the, his country, the way he's been running his country. And even before that, the way that he's been like kind of i won't say brainwashed but the way that he's been taught basically is that like ukraine and all these soviet states because you remember he's old yeah. he's from that time all those places all those things still belong to russia they're still all a part of russia mm-hmm. so like he's trying to take back ukraine because yeah, yeah. he feels like that's they're russians because you know they also are some sneaky people and they were sne- sending <laughs> russians over there they were sending russians into ukraine so uh, it would start a whole bunch of oh we're uh russians we're just trying to be a part of russia we're, we're ukrainians we're just trying to be a yeah. part of russia but like I feel like he just feels like it belongs to him, and I feel like that's kind of like that's kind of like just cutting off your own leg. If he wants to Ukraine to be a part of him, why why nuke him? Now, if he goes nukes another country that's trying to step in, like NATO country, then it's just deep for them. Like, yeah, it's, it's, too just, many, it's too much. I'm not going to war. I told this many of times. I'm oh not, no 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 no! I'd rather serve crack than serve this country. <laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening. Don't care about me. Yo, wild. Hey, yo, not, not me. Hey, Respect bro. though. Respect though. 
<laughs> I'm, not, I'm not I'm not doing that. Like, you know, hey, man, that ain't my cup of tea. But it's not it's not for me. But like with the me. social media thing, right? I like mm-hmm. I was saying like cuz like especially like what just happened like Will Smith smacking Chris Rock, that was so out of character. Oh yeah. But like just imagine like they did that just it's all over social media now. Now everybody's gravitating toward that. And like Jim Carrey once said that uh, a lot of actors and a lot of famous people do shit on social media like to make us laugh mm-hmm. and to distract us from what's really going on. And like you know, Jim Carrey, a lot of shit happened to him after he said that shit. His, they killed his wife or somebody. His wife supposedly died. His girlfriend died. And it's just like, you know, propaganda is a thing. Mm-hmm. But like nowadays, it might be a new form of propaganda that we don't even know about. But it's just so normal to us that we're seeing it on our phone that it's just like, oh, okay, this is just normal. Mm-hmm. But to other countries, it might we might just be, be being like brainwashed ourselves and we don't even know about it. Because yeah. it's so like, bro. If you brainwash people, it's not that hard to do that shit. Nobody has their own thoughts anymore. That's it never the thing. is, bro. Everybody that, wants to be like these YouTubers. Why do you think that? It's, even if we're just talking about just entertainment media that's put out, why do you think these people on YouTube and TikTok, these reviewers, make so much money? Because people ingest some form of media, mm-hmm. some form of content, and they go run to somebody else to go affirm how they feel, or they're just trying to look. For, they feel neutral, and they're just trying to look for a way to feel about something. That's so a fact. if someone reacts and says, "Oh, something's bad," everybody's gonna mob him. Ha ha ha! This guy has a lot of followers. He must know what he's talking about. This thing is bad. Like, <laughs> like I promise you, like uh, Pitchfork be rating good albums bad all the time. They be rating them poorly all the time, and then everybody just runs with that because they feel like that's a reputable website. Website. I uh, get a good sense of the music I'm listening to, I follow that narrative, so it gotta be bad. Or if Rotten Tomato says that a movie is bad, oh, it's gotta be bad, it's Rotten Tomato. Like, people run to other people in the media, they run to different outlets to gain their own insights, and it's, it's weird. It's not direct nope. brainwashing in the sense that people will say, but like, it is because when you get a big enough platform and people just wanna, you know the platform you have, you know that you control a certain narrative in a certain sector, like mm-hmm. music or movies, you know you control this, you can definitely... You don't always do it, but you can consciously push an agenda and it will come to pass. Exactly. That's scary, bro. Like, the, I feel bad for the younger generation, man. Yeah. They they don't got a good, especially if they don't have a good person on top to lead them to where it's supposed to be. Like, I feel, I'm not going to lie. Like, the whole metaverse shit, bro. Like, you know, my little cousin, bro, he has a, he has the little, uh, the headset. That's the Oculus. His, yeah, he has, that's his form of, uh. What's that called? His form of exercise. You better tell that nigga to go outside. You don't want, bro. You really don't want to. Like, he really be sweating on that shit, bro. Like, I ain't never seen a little kid go crazy on the little Oculus game, bro. He's 10. Damn. Closest thing we had to that was We Fit. That's what I'm saying. Look at this. And now they literally putting the shit on your brain and you get to see a whole world. And I also heard that, like, in Oculus, in um the metaverse, you'll get to live an extra 150 years if you if you go in there. But it's like, you have to, like sell like your outside body you're just gonna be like data now but you get to live in the metaverse for like 150 years this world is black mirror bro i promise you <laughs> it was a black mirror episode of the the uh uh i forgot what it was but it was um there was the girl and she was in love with another girl in the online thing yeah the online yeah, thing yeah they were doing and uh basically you it, it was like a chip correct me if i'm wrong it was like a chip or something, and you go into that world, and then once you die, you just continue your essence of your being in that game. Mm-hmm. And yet, but you have to sign a certain thing while you're like on your deathbed or you're about to die, like whatever X Y Z, and then you can just go live in that place forever. Exactly. To, so like, I just feel like that's just that's just so odd to me. It's like, scary. Yeah, no, people are just way too disillusioned. They're getting too. This technology going too far, but you know that's that's what, that's life. That's yeah. It's literally what everything everything's just gonna go too far at a point, and it has to get real. And bad. then yeah, that's how it's gonna be. Maybe I don't know, bro. I feel like this is just a way of uh, controlling people a lot more, bro. Oh yeah. But you want to talk about the? Uh, let's go talk about sports, bro. Let's talk about the NBA. How are you looking at the NBA right now? Um, this game's going on right now. I, I, NBA so weird, bro. I know. Just because of like, also it it it's really just injuries really throw a wrench in things like so much. Like the Celtics, we were that's my team. We were what was it? Eleven Fuck seed. The Knicks. <laughs> it's real knickerbocker hours, bro. Come on. I it, hate Julius Randle. Hey, everybody does. It was uh <laughs> we were eleventh seed before All Star and then Jalen Brown tweeted he said, Oh, the energy about a shift. We're we were I know, I forgot seed, about like, that. We were the first seed like four days ago. 
So like, are you guys still the first seed? We lost, and then it, it's like a deadlock between one game between like the first four seeds in the, the Sixers, the Bucks, the Celtics, and like the Heat. Oh, okay. And it's like a one game between all of us, and it's like five games. It's gonna end crazy. Mm-hmm. And everybody in that East, it kind of is sort of trying to get within that fourth seed, fifth seed, where they get to play a Cleveland or maybe a Toronto. Because yeah. whoever's the first seed has to play Kevin Durant in yeah, that first round. <laughs> yeah. Like they're gonna be the eight, they're gonna be the play. They gotta play Kevin Durant. And Kyrie Irving and possibly Ben Simmons, however, his uh his back heals up. That'd be some cheese, I ain't gonna lie. Like imagine being a first seed and you're like, I gotta face Kevin Durant right now for 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 potentially seven games. Nah, bro. I like, don't know. The Bucks Nets game yesterday was just so nuts that it went to overtime again. KD three missed it to end, and overtime to win the game. Like, yeah, no, I seen Giannis at the game time one. He had forty. He hit a step back three to tie the game and send it to OT. He you had forty four. He oh, listened 44. to UJ, bro, because UJ said he had no bag. No. And ever since he said that, the niggas start going crazy. UJ's just confidently wrong, and I respect <laughs> it. I respect it. He's loud and wrong. I respect it. He knows he'd be wrong, and he just be saying that. He said, "I've never been wrong since 20." But no, no, no. He knows he's wrong, and he just confidently says it. But the thing is, he's so charismatic that people believe it, mm-hmm. and I'll be—I believe it too. He's a cool guy to be around. Yeah, but like, <laughs> he'd be, he be wrong. But hey, I respect it because you got to be confident and wrong. Like, you got—you can't be uh, if you're not confident in what you're saying. Then, like, who are you as a person? But like, hey. no, no, no. He'd be wrong all the time, and I'll tell him the first. Time. <laughs> He said, he said, I, I'll tell, I'll be the first person to tell if he's wrong. And we'll argue about that. But that's my guy. Love I feel you. But, uh, son, the, the West seem, it look a little sweet now. Oh, it, look, it looks it look, very it sweet. Look a little sweet. I think the East is back on top. It's because Ja, yeah, no, absolutely. I've been waiting for this. I'm an East, I'm, tells you I'm an East guy, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ja, his knee, Steph, I think it was, it was his foot. Uh, all these key players uh, are getting injured. Even the Nuggets have a I mean, Memphis is still the... doing good without John Murray. Oh, yeah. They're playing the Suns tonight. They're, they're playing amazing. They're playing great without mm-hmm. John Murray. They went 50% from three in the game. I forgot it was not too long ago. They went 50% from three and one without Ja on the floor against a good team. Like That's tough. And I wanted the Bulls to go to the conference finals so bad because, you know, I'm a Zach Levine stand. But, what, and, what seed are they right now? I think they might be like five. Oh, okay. And they haven't beaten a single, what was it? They said like top four, top five team in the... In the East or in the NBA, one of those two, all year. Like they're oh, and they haven't got a single win against those top teams. So like I, I, I see the Bulls as like a Jazz. Like you know, they're good in the regular season, but when the playoffs come, they just like shit the bed. And I think the Jazz can make it to like a second round ish, maybe further. But the, they're just so inconsistent. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. And the Bulls can't because they're just the core just got together. That core just got together. Yeah. And they're young. I'm like, eh, they don't have that experience. They're gonna need like one or two years before they start going conference final talks. Yeah, yeah. But I think that the conference final, if Robert Williams the third comes back on time, I think that Celtics can go to the conference finals. Uh, Sixers suck. <laughs> James Harden is terrible, and I I maintain this, but like he's a good basketball player. He's a great basketball player, but he's terrible. And uh, why do you think he's terrible? Because when it comes to the big games, like I don't want to be that guy, but when it comes to the big games, he just shrinks. Like you mm. remember when they went? What was it? it was zero for 22, 25, 26 something? Yeah. Uh, when he was on the Rockets mm-hmm. in that last game against the Warriors, and they were just they stunk oh they needed it from him three. yeah they stunk it up yeah and then uh, they just had another big game where Doc called him out the other day. He went like what two for seven for one for seven for three, and he mm-hmm. went like some. He was just shrinking those big games and like. Also, he has a bit of hurt slash injury prone, and Embiid is injury prone. We know this, so yeah, I don't yeah. think he'll make it through a seven game series. I hope he does. I don't wish injuries on anybody, but like yeah. he just that's just the way he plays and the way that people play him. That's just he just gets banged up a lot. Yeah, that's so how like he. that's that's in the playoffs. The reason why it happens is because the playoffs are a lot more aggressive. Yeah, it's, so it's like you play the same team over and over again. So you got you know what to do. People it say, don't work game one. You try something new. How much is that pick and roll with that that weak? Pick and roll with Harden and Sim and uh, and uh, and be gonna work in a four, five, six game series against somebody That's when true. you have no bench. They have Isaiah Joe, Ty, uh, uh, Isaiah Joe, Shake Milton on the uh, bench. They got uh, what's uh, that? George Niang. George Niang. They got they got like it's a be- Corkmans. Whatever. That bad is. benches. <laughs> this that is, is bad benches. I mean, they gave up a lot for they James gave, Harden. So. They gave up Seth Curry, a great shooter. They gave up Seth Curry. They gave up Andre Drummond, prolific rebounder. Like I don't see it. Working out for them. And it sucks because I got Sixers fans, and I know they'll be sad about it. But then again, I love them being sad because I hate the Sixers. I hate the <laughs> sports. I so, like, you. if they get, they get, you know, it is what it is. Hey, Charge bro. it a game. That's how it be. So, so the season's coming down to an end, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I just want to know, like, your season awards. Like, who do you think is going to win? Like, we'll start off with MVP. Who do you think is going to win the MVP this year? 
MVP. It's really getting close. And it's crazy because people are really conflating it with this scoring title, which really yeah. takes it really like Russell Westbrook got two scoring titles. Like, I know. It, 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 like, there's, <laughs> it's like, and I, I love Russ. He had a 2020 game. He's crazy. But yeah. uh, he, uh, like, the scoring title is not really necessarily the MVP because LeBron, he's petty. He's coming back tonight with AD. He's probably going to win that scoring title. Oh, but yeah. uh, there's, um, there's levels to this. Like, I really think that the this season, that the MVP, if we're going by, like, you know, Forget if we're forgetting voter fatigue because Giannis went, he won his, and then Jokic won. If we're getting voter fatigue, then the MVP is Giannis. He's averaging 30, 14, and six. Like, yeah, he's crazy on 50 something percent shoot. He's crazy, mm-hmm. and he got his three somewhat like he put up, he'll score, he'll make like one, two threes a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if we're all things, all politics considered, I think that the MVP it's only fair you give it Embiid. Issue, yeah, I was, that's what I was thinking. They just talking about Jokic, but I'm like, Jokic just had a good year. He's having, yeah, he's having a great year. He's having a historic year. But like, these that's all advanced analytics considered. I'm not an advanced analytics. Yeah, guy. like the per thirty six shit. I'm, I'm a it. he nice watcher. I'm a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a hashtag he nice. That boy good watcher. I'm yeah, not. Yeah. I'm not with that. Uh, analytics help you in the front office to an extent, but like I'm watching to see a hey, who really got it. That's facts. And that's B, facts. Nobody can guard Embiid except, I mean, maybe Jokic because they're just clash of the Titans. But like, nobody's checking Embiid. He's nah. gonna give you that thirty, that thirty, thirty-five. I think so. I think Embiid's gonna be MVP. Too. I hope. Yeah, that'd be good I for him. That. That'd, that'd be good for good him. for Africa. I was just about to say, <laughs> shout out the boy. I need that. Shout out the motherland. Yes, sir. I need that. The fatherland. I need that. <laughs> That's tough. All right. So, who you think will be win Defensive Player of the Year? Mm, I'm putting my. I put my. I put my. If I had a vote. Just to be that guy and be a fan, I throw in Marcus Smart because love that guy. But uh, I, uh, I just uh, see. Uh, I just see. I got for defensive oh, play of the year. Sheesh, I. I was I would say Draymond, but Draymond been yeah, out for he a got, long time. I really want Draymond to get no because he's so he's the best defender in the league for team defense and one on one defense. He's the best defender in the yeah. league hands down. But I might. Mm, I personally, when it comes down to clutch and things he does on defense and efficiency, all that, I I put mine in for Jokic because that guy is nuts on for defense. defense. He's nuts on defense. He's not that fast, and he doesn't like he. You know how many game winning blocks he had this season? Like that kid is playing real defense. He's playing actual defense. <sighs> I don't game. know about Jokic though. But everybody's it's it when defensive player of the year. I like to say like can guard one to five. So like yeah, one to five. I say I want to put my hat my 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 vote in for. Draymond if possible yeah for Draymond if possible just because he's just a he's a generational defender he's an all time defender top top three all time for me top three top cause I see defenders like he just can guard one to five he can lead a defense on a team and he changes the whole defensive like he reads offenses extremely well he's a very smart guy he is he is so like there's a lot of intelligence that comes into play when you have to be a good defender. And I don't play basketball, but I could see this, like all these plays that people are running, all of these switches, all of this tempo change, all these tempo changes, you have to be able to adapt to that. And if you're called upon, if it's a guard, wing, big, and you have to guard somebody off a switch or off a certain set and you can do it and you can direct your teammates while doing it, I think you're a great defender. Mm. I think it's your so if like, top defender. So how? So who you think is in that top defensive category? Ben Simmons, for sure. All uh, time? Oh, no. All Ooh. time. All time. Uh, all time, I got I got Draymond there. I got Dennis Rodman there. I got Pippen. Jordan's okay. there. Uh, but Jordan can't... Jordan wasn't guard 1-5, to five, but Jordan there. Jordan was just... I feel like he, got, he was Rick. like a passing lane steals type of guy. Like him and AI were like that. I who's that? That's the homie. All right, that's Bren. But uh, I got who else is there? I got Tim Tim Allen. Absolutely. Oh, Tony, Tony Allen? Allen. Tony. What am I saying? Tim. I think he's meant like Tim actor. Duncan. That's an actor. Tony <laughs> Allen. Tony <laughs> Allen. Tony Allen is uh absolutely there. Tony yeah. Allen, great perimeter defender. You got Sheesh. Hakeem was good at defense. Hakeem could play some defense. Gary Payton. Um, Gary Payton. Yeah, love, I think obviously. that's I think that's a good list though. Stockton is number one in steals all the time. Nobody's ever breaking his records. He is so far like if you look how far he is above people for assists and steals, nobody's breaking those records. And yeah, I don't think so. Magic's also a good defender, but you know, 
career cut short. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, sometimes you get AIDS. It'd be know. like that. <laughs> something like that. It happens. It happens. All right. Who do you think is going to win most improved player? Most improved player. I think most improved player, like, when it comes to who made the biggest jump this season, mm-hmm. I – and it's really because, like, he's already a big name, already a prior all-star. People are going to say no. But, like, when I say most improvement, the most improvement, I got to say DeMar, bro. Mm. DeMar had the biggest, like, he had the stretch where he was dropping, like, 30, high 30s, 40s for, like, games. For yeah. weeks he was just dropping. like, yo, I've never seen him act like this. So like, he was doing his thing in Toronto and San Antonio, yeah. but he was too. Weekend. I feel like he wouldn't win it because like he's been in the league for so oh, yeah. long. No, no, absolutely not. I he think it's gonna be Ja, to be honest. It's between That's... Ja and Deontay for me. Oh, Deontay, DeJounte Murray. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god, yeah, yeah. I wanted I that kid on our team so bad because he turned to a triple double and all offensive, uh, all defensive and offensive, like just uh, Swiss Army knife. Mm-hmm. Because once you come into the league with that build, and you especially you go to a fundamental team such as like, like the Spurs, the Spurs, and you were pop, you get right with pop. How he got. Kawhi right on offense like, exactly you're gonna turn into something you just come in with that dog in you you play defense already you're already good you can you they can teach you that offense they can teach you how to score get yeah. to your spots dish the ball so mm-hmm. like he's it, between him and Ja and Ja's just otherworldly I can't even Ja's just I feel like Ja I feel like if Ja sits out a lot more games it'd be DeJounte but I feel like Ja you know he's he's on the media all the time so that guy's crazy bro. that's nuts bro. that's crazy bro like, he's you like know, Derrick Rose 2.0 bro and he can shoot Better, way like better, he way can better. Shoot better, way better. I don't know how, but that guy is crazy. Like, that nigga is fast as fuck, and he be like, he I glides knew, on the court. I ain't never seen some shit like that. Bro. I knew from like his rookie season when he was just trying to baptize dudes on, mm-hmm. dudes, and he was missing. Like, he gonna start getting those. Scenes. I know. <laughs> He's gonna start, <laughs> He's getting, gonna start hitting them. It's gonna be scary for people when he starts. When he starts really just pulling up and just, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be scary for dudes. And if he puts a three on it. It's crazy. Exactly. Like the exactly. two players I said it'd be crazy. They put a three on there, it'd be him and Giannis. They both got some sort Somewhat. of, of a a respectable. And respectable they're getting to that shot. level that and three is Ben Simmons. If Ben Simmons really like we see the the tapes every summer. Oh, him he can open shoot. gym. Yeah, he can shoot like that. If he really puts it together, he's unstoppable because he's so fast. Like the the kid is like built and he can play guard one through five. He's mm-hmm. up there. He's yeah, there. I feel you. All right. So and the next one. I mean, it's six man of the year. I think we all know who's gonna be that shit. Who you think? Do we? Who you think is gonna be? Uh, Tyler Harrell there. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Harrell's there. Who else is there? I I really just in my mind Tyler Harrell because he made that jump again. Like, I know. He had the he had the the slump last year, but that's like sophomore slump. It's mm-hmm. natural, but like, and he just came out of the. The, the bubble, bubble pandemic, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. But, yeah, but, but now he's just going crazy again. I'm like, Tyler Harrell's doing the thing. Exactly. So I don't know who else I would I would give it to, honestly. Unless I, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm trying not to be a biased Celtics fan, but <laughs> I'll, give it, I'll give it to really, it's Tyler Harrell. Yeah, I honestly. think it's Tyler Harrell. And the last one is Rookie of the Year. You see, this is the most difficult one, bro. Because, you think so? Because you got a player that comes in. Like Cade, everybody's like, yo, his guy's going to be like the new, like Oklahoma State, he's going to be the new, like... The face of the league. He's going to be the dude. Yeah. The face of his class. He's like, he's up there. He's done. It's yeah. locked. And then it takes him a bit to get in the swing of things with Pistons. And while that's happening, Mobley's already snapping with... The Cavs. Cavs easily. Brought and, him up to fucking the playoffs. And he's playing with another big next to him, Jared Allen. Mm-hmm. And, and nobody thought it was going to work. And it's going with Garland, Rubio. Uh, all these just snapping. I'm like, well, the Cavs are nice. Uh-huh. They're really scary. And then nice. they got Karis LeVert. Bro. But like, he got, he's fucking Karis LeVert. Yeah. But like, I'm like, Mobley's going crazy. I, and then yeah. Scotty started. Yeah, Scotty Barnes tweak. is going crazy. He started tweaking. And I'm like, I feel like he, we knew he was going to be good, especially where oh, he's going. Oh, yeah. That development staff? Mm hmm. Oh, so, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. In that's the, easy, bro. In Toronto? Yeah. Him and I'm happy that uh, 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 Gary Trent. Really start showing people that he's that guy. Yeah, yeah. And friends, I'm glad he's obviously. enjoying himself over there, bro. Yeah, so, but I think that the rookie of the year, and then Franz Wagner. Franz Wagner is good. Yeah, <laughs> he is very good. He's down in Orlando. I think that the rookie of the year, off of like impact for their team, what they like, impact for their team and their personal like their efficiency. I was gonna say K, but it's, it's only right that we give it to Mobley. Yeah, I was gonna say Mobley too. It's only bro. right. We give it's it only Mobley. right, bro. It's, it's only right. He came out. Uh, Allen 
Kane, he got hurt finger, and yeah. Mobley's still hooping. I'm exactly, like, bro. it's only right. It's only right. But l- people, let me know what y'all think about our end of the season uh, award ceremony. You know what I'm saying? Put it down in the comments. You could DM us. You could argue with us if you want to. It don't matter to me, bro. Because we going I'm gonna give you the spiel, bro. I'm open to it. All right, I think I, I got a would you rather question, my brother. Okay. So, would you rather let a child tattoo anything on your face for an hour, or have your height reduced to three three foot eleven? Child. Ah, that's I would say the same shit. I can't live my life. Do you know how short three eleven is? That's like, very I, short. I can't live my life like that. <laughs> I, can't, I, I that's I, I no. And the man could that little boy could just tattoo anything on your but face if he just like. What are the stipulations? Like, I can't get it removed ever? Is that what it is? Yeah, I guess not. If I can't like, get it you're removed... Still, you still go see it. Yeah. If I can't get it removed ever, I will put on makeup every day for the rest <laughs> of my life before I go to work and conceal it before I become three foot eleven. I know. Like, it's, it's not happening. Bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell the little, the little people out there in the world. We're not criticizing. Oh, but absolutely like, not. I love my height. I worked hard for this height. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I put in work in the gene pool, bro. I was, I, there's no way I'm getting. I'm letting. I'm, Three foot eleven is crazy. Like people look at. Like I remember, I was watching this video. You ever, I don't know if you ever seen that video on Twitter. It was like a, a little short dude at a bakery, mm-hmm. and like he was yelling at some lady. She was like, "He's like, you always, you, you women always look at me like because I'm short. You always try to take advantage of me. That. He's like, I'm tired of y'all women on dating sites saying they try to stick me up for a date just because I'm five foot. I'm tired of that shit. He looks so hurt. Imagine that. And Imagine being do, five foot as a grown ass man. You do all of that, and the girl looking, she she say, "Oh, like, <laughs> I, oh, I, oh, oh, I just, I just walk off. I'm sorry, I walk bro. off. I, just, I have to put myself and just lock myself in my room for the rest of my life. There's no way. Exactly. They don't have to see me from, from chin up. They are gonna assume that I'm short. <laughs> then I go no for real though. I, it's hard to live in a life as a as a short it's king, rough. bro. But shout out my cool short kings, man. Shout, shout out to y'all, bro. I got a lot of short kings as friends, man. Shout those guys out. Exactly. They got real personalities. Us tall dudes, you don't have to have a personality. If you just see <laughs> tall, like oh, nah, we don't gotta have a personality. It's nice to have one though. It's a luxury, but the short dudes actually have to put in work. <laughs> they have an actual game, man. I seen short dudes hit on tall girls, like oh, I'm trying to climb the mountain. Them like yo, that's so inventive. I've never heard of that. I need to start using that. That's why I start calling myself five ten. <laughs> I'm a I'm a short king now. Damn, I'm five ten. Five nine. I'm a short king. <laughs> hey yo. Oh my gosh, bro. All right. You got anything else you want to talk about? Mm. You got anything on the topic list you want to discuss? I mean, I plus got we got it. on this shit, bro. I got. That's funny. I got. Oh. Would you rather have generational wealth and be a nobody, or a legacy that lasts the rest of the rest of your of time and be some and have no money? Oh, but I, I've done something. Yeah. So basically, would you rather? I studied there. Would you rather be? Would you rather have all the money in the world and then have no legacy left behind, or would you have legacy that lasts lasts a lifetime? People are taught about you for the rest of the time in history books, but have not a single dollar to your name. Ah, oh, damn! I feel like I'm gonna be selfish. Mm. Cause the ge- the generational wealth does sound good. Yeah. Cause you know I got money for the rest of my family's lives. Mm-hmm. I don't need I don't need to be somebody. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I don't care if niggas like learn about me. So like I think I'll take the wealth because mm-hmm. like at the end of the day, there's there's billions of people in this world. Mm-hmm. So there's so I rather just have money and niggas not know my name and I just be like secret like a, being a secret rich person mm-hmm. that's tough niggas not gonna try to rob me absolutely if you ask most celebrities they would say that they'd rather take the money and lose the fame exactly because nobody's gonna run up on you nobody's gonna break into your house nobody's gonna beg you for pictures nobody's gonna pound you the paparazzi not gonna bother you like you literally just have money and you can be all by yourself that's why these crypto billionaires and these people that own these companies you don't hear about they're the happiest people because they just got money and they don't gotta deal with nobody exactly it might, like my family don't gotta worry about nothing no more and think about it like I was talking about this on one episode like, some people have so much money that they could just, like, not be known of anything. Like, not even know they exist. Freaking people could have so much money, they could be superheroes like fucking Tony Stark. Like, just imagine we have a superhero in the world. Yeah. You don't think somebody in this world with $500 million don't got a super suit that we don't know about. I'm I would, telling you. That would be lit. I'd buy one. I'd oh, have shit, one. Shit, I would make one. If I had all those money, I'd make one. If I, I would make one. Money, and I'd be in fucking Aspen, all that shit, bro. Ab- absolutely. If I had that money... Absolutely. Yeah. I'd be I'd I'd make myself Iron Man. His only power is white privilege. You let me get that money, I'll go crazy. Him and Batman. <laughs> oh shit. Him and Batman. So so what would you do? I would just because I feel like 
I don't want to be like a contrarian, but I feel like the legacy would be able to set my kids up in some sort of way because you make a lot of mm. money off of networking connections, X, Y, Z. So you, a lot of doors get open. I feel like that legacy would set them up, set me up to an extent where I don't have to be too rich. I feel like if I have my name and they can just have that pride in the name that we have in X, Y, Z and just know that, hey, you come from a line of greatness. Like, I feel like that would be pretty dope to have. Yeah, like, that is tough. Having the money, money is cool and everything, but like, and I live right now to try and, you know, make things better for the people that's after me. But like, yeah, I honestly think that the legacy would do them. It would do them good. Like, I don't want to sound like one of those weirdos from the, 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 <laughs> the, the what was it? 500 K with Jay-Z or uh, yeah, dinner yeah. with Jay-Z or 500 K. Like, I don't be that guy, but like, I feel like I do a lot better for not only my kids and their kids, their kids, but like also like my people, like black people. There's not many black people that have that legacy that lasts a lot, a lifetime that they're taught about in all history books, blah, blah, blah. They're venerated by everybody. Like, hey, great, all time. Like, mm. it's not much. Amen, bro. Not many of that. So, like, I feel like I'd, be, I'd be doing more for my people if I were to able to do that. I not only you. black people, Nigerians as well. So I'd be, <laughs> you feel me? I, got, I, I feel like I'd be doing... Just doing to, uh, the people a favor. Just to give another point of view. I feel like, yeah, I'd yeah. be doing them a favor. That's tough. That's tough. Hey, man. As long as it's not a bad thing. Like, oh, no, no, Make no, sure no. nobody look at if you like If it's a bad thing, then it's nuts. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, make sure nobody thing. look at you like you hit That's crazy, bro. bro. For, for, for genocide, be like, like Coney or the child <laughs> soldiers? No, bro. No, hey, bro. bro. Ain't no way. Like, I also seen another thing. It mm. said, um, would you rather have the brain of Nikola Tesla or the charisma of Adolf Hitler? Charisma of Adolf Hitler. <laughs> and... The thing is because he was able to mobilize so many people to his cause, like terrible person, yeah, like great effective leader, effective really leader, effective leader. That's a and that's a not unpopular opinion. That yeah. nigga was a good leader like, in a bad way. In a bad, he led them to ruin, but he was a good. <laughs> he was good at it. He was good like, at it. And the brain of Nikola Tesla only will take you so far because it's not as much being a. Smart solo, smart person on it's your a, own. There's only like, so much you could do being smart on your own. Yeah, but when you can get so much more done, being a great leader, working with other people, you can accomplish so much more. Yeah, I feel like being smart on your own. I feel like being super smart. There's like like people put restrictions on you. Oh yeah, like a lot. Like I wouldn't be surprised if like like freaking like if you invent shit. Like I remember, you know, Nikola Tesla invented the Tesla coil type shit like that. You ever heard of that? No. So like Nikola Tesla invented a. Uh, a coil that's like a power source that it takes power from the from the uh, magnetic field i think it's like magnetic field some shit in the atmosphere oh. so like and he he pitched it to the government and they said fuck that because you know we're gonna be losing money at the same time because mm. that's a limited power mm. and like he created it but like ever since he created it, it's like nigga said fuck that nigga dipped on him and then i forgot i don't know i think he died but like nobody knows what happened to that nigga and another dude like you ever heard about the dude that made um Made a car running on water? No. Like, there was a dude that made a car that runs off of water. He disappeared, didn't he? <sighs> bro. He, bro, you know you know what was happening? He, like, a lot of the oil companies was trying to buy it off of him. Mm. And they was telling him, like, oh, yeah, we'll buy it off of you. And, but they, we're going to, like, make it better. But they're really going to destroy it. Because, like, if they, if you make a car made out of, like, that runs off of water, you know, they're going to be run out of business. You're not going to need oil no more. Oh, yeah. Especially for cars. Like, imagine you just need to go fill that shit, fill your tank up with, like, Fucking a hose and shit. Yeah, that no, no, that's nuts. And like supposedly he died like of a heart attack, but like they think they poisoned him. They did something. And then after that shit happened, his laboratory was like cleaned out. Like, like the car. They took the car. Whoever was there, they took the car, messed up the laboratory, and they made they banned that making any vehicle made on water. The government be snitching on themselves. They do, all bro. The time they do, like, bro. If you're just gonna make them wipe them, wipe them. Hey, just take the key things that they needed, the key ingredients, key uh, pieces, take it. <laughs> you want to wipe the whole thing and say, oh, he died of a heart attack. Nah, bro. You you snitched on You, you just snitched on, on that nigga, bro. You snitched on yourself, bro. Hey, bro. You snitched on yourself. And plus, like, they said it's going to be bad for the economy. But I mean, like, my nigga, just figure it out. It's a, this whole economy stuff is not real. Like, I keep be telling, it's none of this stuff is real. Like, bro, if they canceled. You know how much money would be put back? Like it's, it's made up. It's like, a cycle. And you know how much money? Like say they just decided, hey, we're gonna cancel your credit card debt and your student loan debt. Everybody, blah blah. blah. Mm-hmm. 
all that money that people were taking and putting towards that, they can now put towards buying useless stuff because that's what Americans do. Facts. So if you do that, you buy all that useless stuff, that money's getting reshuffled into the economy. economy. And guess what? We're still right back on our feet. The only reason that the, the reason that the economy tanked this past last time because we were in the pandemic and obviously there's not much people can't go out and buy as much stuff, but people still buying things. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Amazon and online outlets, but there's only so much money you can that can be made off of that. But like the economy's gonna dip when when they're when stuff goes awry, basically. When yeah. stuff goes wrong, shit goes left, economy's going to dip. Hell yeah. But it is going to recover eventually because it's just all man-made stuff. None of this stuff is real, bro. It's not, None bro. of this stuff is they real. Just, they just do this shit to like control our mind, to control our worlds, bro. Do you think that that King Leopold, and terrible person, back in, in, <laughs> in, 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 the, in the days, was saying, oh, we can't, we can't give money to these poor, we can't give money to the poor people, we can't do what we're trying to do we can't go take over these other countries we can't go colonize because it's bad for the economy like yeah dog the economy is not real like none of that stuff is real bro none of that stuff is real all these people are insider trading all these uh these stock options all these stock markets well it's all manip- manipulated yeah. that's why they shut down the whole GameStop pump, if you've seen that, yeah, when that yeah, happened. Yeah. they shut that down because the people were making money the commoners were making money like they're not none of this stuff is real all this stuff is set in, pace, in place to make sure that the people in power stay in power and the people with money keep their money. Exactly. And all this stuff And the people fake. like us, we just keep it. We're just in check. Literally. Just like what the Romans said, bro. The scariest thing is a group of poor people. Bro. The scariest thing in the world is a group of poor people, bro. But I think we're going to the conspiracy part of the show. You, you have any conspiracies that you know about or that like you ever thought about? Because I got, I got a good one if you want me to tell you first. Uh, what conspiracy do I have? What conspiracy do I have? I think I've I got a couple that I'm sitting on, but I just like when it comes to conspiracies, I like to really just before I start telling people about it, I start blah blah blah. I like to sit on it for the oh yeah hell yeah. I like sitting on the conspiracy the theory for a while and just thinking. I'm like, all right, bro. You know how many people think I'm. But listen, you're good. <laughs> oh, I'm dumb. I'm sorry. You're good. Bleep that out. We can cut that out. But, uh, <laughs> we got that in post. Yeah, but, uh, you can't say certain words on the internet. I yes, the sir. Internet. And I'm pretty sure I can't even drink my on the internet. Nah, you'll be we'll, all right. We'll figure it out. But um, <laughs> there's like, it's like, we'll just cut out the parts that say, those things is grape juice. But um, <laughs> there's a, a what, what conspiracy? I think that, oh, I think that. People don't think that it's real, but I think that there's actually like a real, not just like the regular, like the real, like centralized World Bank that's controlled by a few oligarchs, like a mm-hmm. few group of people in power that they just like, like the whole economy is fake. Mm-hmm. All the XYZ is fake. This uh, foreign exchange, all the v- value of the euro, the dollar, the pound, all it's fake. It's controlled by the same group of people. I oh, I hell believe, yeah. I believe that wholeheartedly because there's no way that some currencies around the world tank, some inflate. Like you go to some countries, it's going to take you literal wheelbarrows of money to get a slice of bread exactly a loaf of bread wheelbarrows of cash and then you go to the united states you give them hey, here's a, yeah here you go <laughs> yeah. like, there's no way i feel it and then just random dips in in like, inflation ebbs, and shit like that of, if you think about the economy the stock market in market in large it's there's a lot of logic and logical things that come into play when it comes to like trying to predict these trends and X, Y, Z. And there's a lot of good things and bad things that happen to companies that should inflate or dip the, yeah, st- exactly. the, the stock price. Mm-hmm. But yet it's so unpredictable. Why is that? Mm. There's people controlling that kind of stuff behind the scenes, which is why they shut it down so quickly on Robin Hood with, with uh, GameStop when the people started controlling it. Mm-hmm. There's people that obviously control these kind of things because there's no way that something, there's no way that anything in this life could be so uncertain when there are so many resources so many ways to get access to how it actually works that's true that's true i feel like i mean i feel like they do that to like keep the balance yeah because like you don't want too many people being rich you don't want too much people being i mean they rather hella people be poor than everybody be rich because then money's worthless if everybody's an honor roll student then nobody's an honor roll student that's a fa- mm, that's really a fact that's really a fact i'm not gonna lie that's some smart shit. That's I'm really t- bro, true. I'm telling if you. Every single person in class is an on-roll student. Like, you got to... 
make people be special then you got to go to honors if everybody's an honor student then there's no ap students because even though there's college credits and all those you know, pizzazz if everybody's an ap student then what is this what, what how special is it wow that's so true there it's always, like a, in everything in life there has to be classes there has to be a cast or else nothing is special and everything is exactly and nothing's and, nothing like motivates you to get up there and, and, and everybody's it's like a an cycle existentialist, it's like existentialist. A, mm-hmm. yeah. and there's like a whole cycle of like you trying to get all the way up there Maybe you'll never get there in your life. Some people never get there, but some people do. And it's like when you see that one person, you be like, oh, I could do that too. Yep. And then it just puts, oh, damn, we just cracked the code, my yep. nigga. That's the American dream. I can do this because somebody attained it from the butt. Somebody got it from the mud. I can get it from the mud. Exactly. No, you can't. <laughs> There's things that came into play that let them get it from the mud. Oh, man. That's why I'm a socialist. Uh, <laughs> that's tough. But Shout out my boy Rodney. He put me on. What, a socialism? Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. Hey. It is humane. Capitalism it, is the devil. But, you know, I'm not going to get into that bag. Hey, White man. people going to hate me. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but. But I got, a, I got a new segment I've been starting the show. It's called Urban Legends from Each State. So, people, if you want to let us know where you where you live, brother, comment down below and we'll do your, we'll do your state next. Because I, I put it on like a little wheel. So, people, mm-hmm. comment down below. Your state where you live at, and we're gonna find we'll find some urban legend shit about y'all. But this week we're gonna talk about Utah because I didn't ah, Jersey. We're gonna Utah. talk about the Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, there's a legend in um Utah. It's actually a thing. It's called the it's like the Petrified Forest. So it's like it's called Escalante Petrified Forest in Utah, uh-huh. and it's said that it's cursed. And anything that you take from that land. Like, your life just goes downhill. Oh, so anything you take. You take a rock. You take a leaf. You take a piece of bark. You take a piece of grass. Like, they made it illegal to take stuff from there. Because, like, people were sending shit back. Like, there's a whole room filled of, like, letters. And, like, in the letters is, like, the rocks that people took. And, like, you know, some people are idiots. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Some people be like, oh. Yeah, respectfully. Some people just be like, oh, let me let me try this out. I want to, like, this, this is not real. People take stuff. You know what happens to them? They get people get divorced from their wives. People get uh, fired from their jobs. People get into car accidents, regular accidents. Uh, some people even died because of the shit. And like they just send it back, hoping that they get their life back. Type shit. Okay. And like, like I don't know. No, no, no you can't get your life back. There's no way it's something like supernatural killing that like that. Like you, you're gonna you you stuck with that for life. Exactly. You made that mistake, but like, like I don't know. Like, do you believe in shit like that? Yes, mm. because there's no way that you can go if people are saying something's cursed, blah, blah, blah. Just me, even if I didn't believe in it, if people, my personal, the way I was raised, the way that I just view the world, if I see people and I hear about people, hey, we took something, say like three, four people, say, and I'm sure it's more than that, Yeah. said, hey. Oh, it was like we, a lot. It was like hundreds. We did some stuff. We took some stuff from this forest. And it was weird. Why? <laughs> Why am I going to go run into traffic? <laughs> Why am I like, if I'm watching the cars go by, I see two people run into traffic and they get hit by cars. Am I going to go say, hey, I wonder if they're going to stop? Yeah, No. no. I'm going to wait till the, the walk dude appears on that screen and I'm going to walk safely. Exactly. And I'm still going to look both ways. Exactly. There's no way that I'm going like, there's no way. You're going to no try way. that shit. No. Nah. If you see that, if I see the way I am, even one person like, yo, I had a never experience. All right, cool. You could take. I'm not even all trying t- that. All it took was me hearing one negative story about skydiving. Me like, yo, I'm not doing that. Oh, skydiving. Yeah, that's a that's a touchy topic. I know that it's fun for some people. It's like, you know, adrenaline. Blah blah. blah. Everybody yeah. loves. It. Everybody's an adrenaline junkie because they social media. But um, facts. Turn that up. Couldn't be for me. Huh? Couldn't be for me. I mean, I would want to do skydiving, but like, I remember. I will never forget what Ish told me. But he said, he said, bro, just think about it. Like you don't think one one parachute like every parachute in the world went off, bro. Like <laughs> like the stories about this happening. Like, what are you gonna do if it's out of everybody? What are the t- that your parachute didn't Does, go, doesn't like, go, bro? I hope I hope they I, have like a safety measure where like they just dive and try to get you. If I go, it has to be at any point. I'm not going to though. If I have to go, it's gonna be with. I know that my parachute's good. And yeah. I know that my instructor parachute's good. And I'm diving with them holding on to me. And I'm driving, diving with yeah, them. Yeah, I think they you dive with them. I need that their parachute to make sure that I'm good. Yeah. And if their parachute goes off, I'm staying with them. I don't need to be solo diving or... Yeah, hell even, no. I think you do it with the person. Like even, So you're, you're connected to him. Even the people that go into the whole... Because I don't know if you've seen like 
the ocean, the divers that go into cages under the water. With the sharks? sharks. I'm not... <laughs> say it's your cage that's not good enough for the... That's strong enough for the shark. And then that should get in there? Nah, bro. What you gonna do? You gonna hold that piece of uh, I'm gonna piece beat of rope. that shark ass. Yeah. Respectfully, <laughs> you, you, know gonna hold, you gonna hold that? You gonna hold that rope out uh, uh, horizontally? And you gonna, they gonna go? Nah, bro. You gonna fold? You like ah ah? Hey, <laughs> you man. gonna fold? Oh God! There's no way, bro. I'm oh, not. Man. There's no reason for me. There's enough risks walking around. Think about how many risks there are just walking around daily life. You can walk into God forbid the wrong person, wrong time. Mm-hmm. You're in trouble. You can drive. Auto <laughs> auto accidents happen literally all the time. Exactly. Gone. Airplanes, trains, mm-hmm. all this stuff. And why would I go out of my way to go look for trouble? Exactly. Trouble is not calling me. Trouble <laughs> is calling whoever wants to refer to me. God bless you. Go do it. Exactly. Not That's not mine. That's not our cup of tea, bro. We black. We don't do that shit. We don't do that paranormal shit. Why am I go look for trouble? That's why a fact, would I go bro. look for that? That's a fact. Like people like go and look back. I'm I'm weird, bro. Like I, I I won't go looking for trouble, but like if nigga said Bigfoot in the forest, I'll go look for Bigfoot. You don't look for trouble, but you're entertaining. Oh yeah, like like do you like do you believe in Bigfoot? It's hard for me to not believe in. You can't believe in Goliath from the Bible and not believe in a lot of stuff. Mm. You that's like if you like I don't take everything because I know I don't think you're meant to take every single thing from the Bible literally, but believe the stories that come behind it, you mm-hmm. grow from it X Y Z. Yeah, and there's obviously things from the Bible that you believe. Yeah, but like I feel like the stories are real behind it, and there's some stories that are actually. Factual. I don't think that there's a lot in me that I can't believe because I like to believe. I'm not gullible, but I like to believe most of the things around me. I'm like a little be, gullible, but I try my best to hold it in. I like to be open minded. So I'm exactly. like, yo, this thing can exist. Yeah, sure. I feel like it's possible. Ah, especially with a lot of people seeing this shit. Like, imagine somebody that believe or seen Bigfoot comes up to me and they know I'm a Christian. I'm like, yo, I seen Bigfoot. I'm like, oh, I don't believe in that, but you believe that there was a Leviathan in Revelations. I'm like. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, you got me. <laughs> you got me. Let's go hey, find Bigfoot. Like, hey, bro. I just think, like, if you believe in aliens, like, you could believe in Bigfoot, too. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, you know, you know, we don't know what's in space. We don't know what's mm-hmm. in the forest. Yeah. We don't know the same. Like, we only know what we walk through yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah. And it's easy for you to walk through something, get snatched up, never be heard from again. And oh, you can't yeah. Tell the story. I so hope like, nobody snatches me up. Yeah, hey, just don't be too inquisitive. Just know your boundaries. Know your your areas. I be thinking like I'm people. I'm going across boundaries when I talk about shit on this podcast. No cap. <laughs> you know, hey, no regulars, bro. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know but what I'm uh, <laughs> we're not we on the. We're good for. We're good off of that. Like even in with aliens and stuff. Like I'm not gonna say aliens don't exist, but I'm like if aliens do exist, I'm like there's just so much stuff out there that I'm like. Exactly. We didn't even know that Pluto wasn't a planet until our lifetime. Exactly. So like, like we've been thinking. Hey, we we figure out shit every day. Something new every day. I might be wrong on that, but I remember I they think it was during our lifetime because they used to teach us Pluto was the eighth planet and then or ninth planet. I think it was in fifth grade, like when we was in class. Yeah, low key might have been then. Yeah, and then they said that no, it's not Pluto's a, planet, a dwarf no. planet. Neptune's the last. I'm like, all right, all right, bro. I think Pluto's a planet. Yeah, I, they taught me that. If, if I they told me that early, hey Pluto, you could be a planet. Don't matter. Short Shout out kings. to you, bro. Short kings. Short kings, yes sir. Hey, but um, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about one of the topics you put on here, bro. So mm. if you could be an Olympic athlete, what sport you think you'll what is your best chance to get win gold in? All right, not counting obviously, like because if you had your best chance to get gold, obviously you say basketball or track. Yeah, I'd say soccer. I'd say that my best chance from sports that I don't do, I'd say. Oh, summer, damn, something I don't do. Fuck. I was yeah, going to say so, triple jump. Yeah, I was right, going to right? so, uh Wait, wait, Are we saying summer or winter? Or we'll both? S- I'll give you both. Okay. So for summer, I'd say my best chance for summer Olympics, I'd say probably. Actually, we'll just do summer because winter, like, I don't, I don't yeah, even know yeah, the sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not so lot indoor, yeah, it's, yeah, It is a lot of indoors and, uh, and winter themed things. For summer, I think I'd say. To get a gold, I'd probably I'd cheese it and say say basketball and just sit on the end of the bench and never play. But if I had to do it myself, like a solo sport, an individual sport, yeah, I'd probably if I had time to get my body right and get into, I'd say probably most likely 
probably shot put. Mm. Nah, that, that'd be, but it's so much years of like it's so hard. To That's say a, it's a technique. Like, yeah, it's a technique. You gotta be strong and got a good core and like and got a strength. good technique and, and throwing good, that bitch. You also and that, balance. Like, you have to good balance. balance I, too. I got shit balance. But uh, <laughs> and technique it takes time to learn that. And I'm obviously not gonna disparage the people that put in their whole life. Uh, shot put is gonna watch this. And be like, oh, he think he could do what I do? Exactly. Like, that, that never. But like. I feel like when it comes to like my physical abilities, that'd be the most the thing that I would inc- like that I'd be more inclined to do. Like, yeah, yeah. I naturally gravitate towards that first. I feel before you. I hurdled in high school, mm-hmm. not fast enough anymore for that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I don't think I got the bunnies for 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 jumps. Like, I think shot put, stand on the ground, just throwing something strong. Mm. It's a big that'd be the best chance I got. That's tough. I think I'll be I'm not gonna go I'm going like a whole nother direction. I'm mm. doing ping pong, like table really? tennis. I'm oh, low-key nice ping pong. Cause like I'm pretty good at table tennis, yeah. like a ping pong. Yeah. So like if I practice a little more, I think I could get nice. Like oh and like I don't gotta get in too much shape. I forgot about all of that. Like yeah. ping pong, they got badminton. Yeah. I'll go crazy no, at ba- badminton. I changed my I, ch- <laughs> I changed my answer. Badminton. I've always been nasty at badminton. I've always I'll been go nasty crazy. at badminton. I was because I always time it as it flips. I'm like, oh, I can hit it now. Oh no, I've always been nasty at badminton. Now I just ooh, and then oh yeah, that fry or, the Chinese that people or beach volleyball between those two. Beach badminton volleyball kind of hard though. It is because you can't really get that lift or oh, move around kinda, on. And sand. there's only two people. Yeah. That's a lot. I, I I think beach volleyball low key is one of the hardest sports. Low key. Oh no no yeah, you gotta have like their legs probably gotta be shredded. But like Hell I, yeah, I, I love volleyball too much. I'd be uh, committed. I get to committed to it. Like, I really like that. Be one of the things I get into that or uh, or badminton. <laughs> I'd really get into it, but other than that, yeah, yeah. And but like, if ping pong, I'll be ping pong champion. Fuck the Chinese. Respect. Oh my god, chill. Bro, Shout out my Asians, bro. I'm half Filipino. You know what I'm saying, yes, sir. That's a Pinoy boy. <laughs> but uh, we got what's yes, it sir. called? I got for winter just to cheat. I really it came across my mind. I know we're not doing both, but it just came across yeah. my mind last minute for winter. Probably uh uh, uh what's it called? Curling. I knew he was going to say curling. They, bro, this I'd be so nice. Like, imagine, imagine, like, who's who's uh, in our group? Imagine, imagine UJ just throwing uh, the curling stone, and then UJ's got me and Chi just, <laughs> we just, we just, we just brushing. Sweeping? Bro, what we just that? sweeping? We just brushing? Brushing the floor? Yeah, and I feel like we just be like, all right, and just like, we'd be nice. That's I, that's tough. Curling seems like such a fun sport. Like, I wish I could move on ice like that or whatever, and if you don't have to, like, I'm down, but like I feel like curling would be such a funny sport to do. It's such a fun sport. Yeah, I feel like I don't even know how you get into shit like that. I don't know. <laughs> like I feel like there's like one curling team like per state. I feel like like, like not even not even like pro team. I'm talking about like unpro like kids wise. There's only one per what? state. That's like that's bad. You gotta make this is a one or you gotta do another sport. Like, like I'm talking about you. You know how there's like a. Like recreational basketball and soccer yeah, leagues. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about there's no recreational there's, curling. It's, it's just one, one team, one, one program, one program in Imagine New Jersey. Imagine living in all of California. There's one curling team. Like you in San Francisco, you want to be the best curling team, but you gotta go out to Sacramento. If you don't make it, you just gotta book. You got you gotta play tennis. Hey, <laughs> bro. Ain't no hey, way. That, fuck that shit, bro. Hey, bro. I, but, I, just try it out. You know, new hey, things. People try new things. It's not that hard, bro. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all gonna do if you was in the Olympics, man. But um, hold on, I got another question for you. All right, so would you rather get paid a dollar every time you take a breath or every time you blink, something good happens to you? A dollar every time you take a breath or every time you blink, something good happens to you. Every time you breathe and you get paid a dollar, something good's happened to you regardless. Yeah. But you breathe, I think you probably, just like with the doors and uh, the doors and wheels thing, I feel like you breathe. I feel like it's a close. I feel like you blink it's close. a lot more than you breathe. It's close. It's like eh. I think I looked it up. It's like twenty thousand. Yeah. About. But like, think about it. we we play sports, so yeah. we breathe oh, like yeah, yeah. we breathe like, a lot. We yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. If so. I just go hoop or play soccer, you you just you just got paid like yeah. a rack, literally, yes, literally, <laughs> just, just for for a couple couple hours. So like something good, but uh, like anything but, good, like you know, a job promotion, win every, the lottery. That's every time I blink. Every time you blink. No, like, absolutely blink because I blink. I feel like I would blink a lot more. And two, who's to say that once of the time, one of the times that I blink, I hit the lottery for twenty million. That's what I'm saying. Like it's not like like when you blink something, it's not gonna be something big. But like mm-hmm. you might blink and like, oh, you found a dollar. Yeah, some shit like that. Something good. I think I was gonna do that same thing too, but I feel like I blink a lot. Yeah, and like I don't know breathing, but like. There's so much options to the the blinking one, bro. Oh yeah, that shit could go anywhere, bro. Oh yeah. Oh, like yeah. imagine I blink and fucking, 
I went all expense paid trip to Bahamas. Yeah, it's fire. It's lit. So like, hey, bro, I take yeah, that shit. A dollar. I know what I'm getting. If you're more of like, a, what was it? Maybe like a. I forget. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but like a Type A person, I feel like you pick a dollar, so it's more consistent. You know, hey, I just breathe yeah. dollar, dollar, dollar. Mm-hmm. I feel like people that are more like. Hey, we'll see what's going on. I feel like niggas that pick the pick the dollar, they just gonna sit in their bed and just go just literally just like literally, hyperventilate and kill the jokes. I'll, I'll <laughs> like, just breathe it. Hey, breathe bruh. it for the dollar. <laughs> Shit, bro. But respect. We, what else do you want to talk about, my brother? I we, think we got we got I found one more. Oh. Yeah, we just wrap it up after this? Yeah. So just uh when was the last time you thought, quote, I'm never doing this again? <sighs> Ah, when was the last time I thought I, that? I got some good. I got some good times <laughs> with, with the "I'm never doing that again." I got some good times. Oh my god, I can't think of one off the top of my head. But like, I, it's probably like some weird ass like. Probably like I probably like did like some game type shit and I got mad. Mm. I can't think. Fuck. Let, let me let me hear your story and then let's see. Okay, the last time I said that I'm never doing this again. Not counting the last time, because it takes a lot for me to say it. I think it in my mind all the time. Yeah. When I get frustrated enough, I'm like, I'm never doing this again. Yeah. But last time I said it out loud, shout out Jalen, Carl, Luis, <laughs> all the homies, Phil. I was at school uh-huh. and we had a party in our crib. Yeah. And I legitimately, everybody was drunk, everybody had a good time, blah, blah, blah. I go, I couldn't even get into my own bathroom. I go in my bathroom. After I, after like everybody goes, I go into my bathroom to go grab some stuff, clean up, blah, 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 and then dip, go get some food, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I see my contact case on the counter. One cap, like one cover of the cap is missing. Uh Uh-huh. I find it underneath the sink. Okay. And I go and I look. The floor is kind of dirty, but you know. Yeah. It comes with territory. And I look at my bathtub. All of my bath essential stuff is moved around and there's just a quarter right by the drain. What the fuck? Bro, I said. <laughs> and then on top of everything else outside of my room. Yeah. Being messy. And there's a whole bunch of lost stuff that's in my room. Obviously, some products, people's other uh, like beauty products and people's uh, like uh, shoes and well, not shoes, like socks and just random stuff. Yeah, random stuff yeah, people yeah. Leave. Like not even socks, like shades, like like four pairs of shades. Mm-hmm. People just like different stuff that's lost around in my room and then still dirty outside of them like. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> like, you, you just couldn't remember shit? And then on top of that, like, it was not only dirty in the crib, but outside of the crib. Because the, the way it went down is we had, I had people over. Like, the way I have, I have, like, not to be that guy, but I have a good amount of friends. Of course. And across the different channels, I'm like, all y'all just pull up to our crib, our, uh, our compound, our uh, place we lived in because it was big and it was new. Mm-hmm. They had a pool. They had barbecue and yeah yeah basketball court vault, same boat, blah, blah, blah i'm like shout out the yards i said oh y'all just pull up mm-hmm. to the yards for uh i'm gonna have people over and i have them over and we all just decide we, we gotta leave and i live like a ride around across the street from there from the uh from the from like the rec house basically this is where all the the clubhouse yeah i yeah, live across yeah. from there where everything's at this for all the residents. I live right across the street. I'm like, does everybody just go back there for like after whatever and just chill and do whatever. And then all that stuff goes down and I go in my backyard, crush cans all over the place and there's this all all this stuff and then we had to clean up and I'm like, yo, we are never doing this again. Did it twice more. Said we're never doing this again. I said we're never doing this again but it was a good time, you know? As long as you enjoy yourself, bro. You know what I'm saying? As long as anything goes safe, nothing goes south. In the I didn't enjoy myself in the moment. It'd but be like that. Retrospect, uh, retroactively, it was fun. I'm, I'm trying to think. Like there was definitely times. Like I'm terrible. Like recollecting shit. Like remembering shit. I feel like I'd be doing a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I got one. You don't got one. Nah, it's probably there's probably a time where niggas came over to my crib and like probably broke a chair or some shit. Yeah, they buddy. Still, what, come on, <laughs> come on. Hey. They, and it's crazy how they blame me for that. <laughs> considering the way that it was somebody else sitting in the chair. I was sitting on the side because I was sitting on the back. And I remember because I know I was sitting on the back because I have a video. For some reason, I was just recording you. I was, yeah. I was I was being weird. I recorded you, Jay, just, just doing something odd. Yeah. And I, I, I recorded it and I still have it. And I was like, the, and the only reason I still have it is because 
it's well he was it's UJ doing something weird yeah I have to have it and it was uh, it was uh also my proof that I wasn't sitting in the chair at that time and the only reason I came up to that chair that I was uh, eyeing is because Ish wanted to play me in Fever Street yeah I played him I lost and then I went back to where I was and then I leave and I'm almost home they're like yo Tom you broke the chair I had a job at this time I, I promise you I would have just been like oh my bad my bad uh, I hope you get rid of it and I'll pay for the next one but I'm like dog I sat in the chair for like only so much time and everybody's gonna say oh you broke the chair but like if I'm wrong I'm gonna tell you I'm wrong I don't got that I don't got that much pride I let go of all that stuff a while ago uh-huh. I don't argue with people I don't have that much pride but like if if I feel like if I have a good enough like thought, recollection yeah a good enough thought real good enough recollection of right, time, memory like, and shit I will maintain that yo I don't think I did this I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure like I'm pretty sure that's not how it went down but if they said hey if I if I was too fat I, I wasn't even fat then and before the summer 2020, I wasn't even fat then. I wasn't even fat then. I wasn't fat yet. So like the like, Tommy broke a chair standpoint stigma was like going around for a good summer. Bro, <laughs> everybody saying I broke the chair. I'm like, I wasn't fat yet. I wasn't even fat yet for me to have break, broken the chair. Like, and nobody knows to this day who broke that chair. And they maintain it was me just because everybody remembers me being in a chair because I was talking all that rah-rah to Ish and everybody that I'm good at FIFA Street and I lost and everybody gassed it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. But like, I don't. If I broke the chair, worst case, if I broke the chair, I would have heard it, or people would have heard it. If I'm break, if I'm sitting in a chair and I actually break it, <laughs> I promise you, the way we're all sitting around each other, people would have heard it. We would have seen that shit. You would have seen it, and you would have heard it. I think it was John. Hey, I think it was John. He was the one. That, he was the closest nigga. That, he's the one I remember. Bro, if I'm sitting there, and I didn't sit there for too long, if I sit in the chair, and especially me, my big self and my long legs, if, <laughs> if a leg gives out or something to the chair, you're going to hear it and you're going to see me slump or something's going to happen. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it, it, if I did, hey, Chris, I apologize if I did, but I genuinely believe that I didn't. So. Hey, man. It's the, it's, that's the mystery of uh, the members, but niggas don't know who broke the chair. Niggas don't, ugh, that's tough. Hey, that's a conspiracy. That's your conspiracy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a conspiracy. Hey, I broke brother. the chair. But thank you all again for tuning in to another episode of No Regrets Podcast, episode number 31. If y'all haven't already, follow all the socials down below. And like I said before, man, I don't know if you know, we are dropping merch soon. I'm here? Yeah, bro. I'm here for it. We got merch coming soon, probably in the summertime. You know, I just, new logo also coming soon. Yes, sir. Maybe by the next episode, we might have the new logo. And um, yeah, if y'all haven't already, go down and subscribe if you're new. Send it to a friend, all that shit. Like the video up. Go to the comment section. You want us to talk about anything, and um, you want to, you want to end off with anything, my brother? Uh, please take care of your mental health. It's important, uh, especially in this day and age. Take care of yourselves, of course. We love you guys, obviously. And if you feel like nobody got you, I got you. Doctor Tom got you, man. At Cozy Tommy, well, follow me. New music coming soon. I'm lying, but I'm telling the truth. All right. <laughs> That's all. Hey, man. Shout out to my nigga Tom, bro. Thank you for pulling out to the episode, my brother. Of course. You know what I'm saying? We different than regular regs, man. Gangsta.